Hi. So, does anybody know what conformism means? If you don't, save it. I know what it means. Because I was part of a society that conformed to a lot of beliefs. So, I'm going to explain to you what it means. Conformism, or people who conform, uh, is basically a society that tries to fit in by following, you know, trends, rules, do's and don'ts that are accepted norms of living in the country or any sort of community. And I'm going to break it down a little further. A person who habitually conforms to customs, rules or styles of a group to fit in and to be a part of it. Or the way I see it, you're just really scared to go out and give your opinions. You're scared of what people are going to say. You don't have the courage to go ahead and do what you want to do because you're constantly seeking approval from society to fit in. Yeah, the way I see it, it is someone who is afraid to be themselves because they're ashamed of who they are and seek constant approvals from society by trying to adhere to society's rules and expectations. That's what conformism is. And what I'm doing on Humans of Bangalore is trying to break it. So I'm going to ask you all to imagine a world where, you know, you just, you want to do something for yourself. Say you want to quit your job. Probably you're at a desk job. You don't want to leave because you don't have financial security or, uh, you know, your parents are dependent on you for some reason. And uh, you have this dream of going out and doing something for yourself. You know you're much happier going on to do that, but you're stuck in this job. What if people pulled in forward and said, hey, look, we got this for you. We've got this for you. Go do what you want to do. We'll help you out. Money will come in. But the idea is to go and follow what you need to do to be yourself. The very essence of you is important. Without that, you will not be able to be happy in life. So that's one thing that I realized when I started Humans of Bangalore. The idea was definitely from Brandon Stanton. He's inspired me a lot in the way New York has changed it's thinking just through his page alone. He's reached out to people in the streets of New York, spoken to them. He's brought forward thoughts that I wouldn't share with anybody. You know, people are coming, braving forward to talk about that. What if I created a platform like that here, but to talk about issues that really, really, really matter here in India? We cannot come up and talk to another person that, hey, you know what, I'm being bullied at school. And I don't know what to do about it. I can't tell my mom because she'll say, what is this? Man up, go, go to school, who cares? No one's going to be paying attention to things like that. What if, you know, in India especially, there's a bias towards talking about a lot of issues, about sex especially. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, their uh, sexual orientation. Nobody wants to talk about the issues that they go through. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that they've been raped, anybody, man or woman, even if they've been, for men especially, even more, if they've been sexually abused, it's even more difficult for them to seek help. So, okay, yeah. So that's why I think we need a platform like Humans of Bangalore for people to come forward so that we do not judge them for what they say or what they do, things that they're doing, because it's difficult to understand what another person is going through, unless and until we know what they're going through, we will not be able to help them. And we're in no position to be judgmental about it. That's what I'm trying to create on Humans of Bangalore. So I would like us all to imagine a society that is absolutely non-judgmental. A society that asks you, tell me what you'd like to do and we'd like to help. Instead of, no, you can't do that, what will everybody think? Do you think that's practical? And uh, you know, maybe a society that is surprised when people do, you know, things out of kindness, acts of kindness are perceived as, wow, man, hats off to you. I can't believe you were able to do that. You know, we need more people like you. Why is it so difficult for us to find people, you know, who are kind? And when people are kind, when they do something, you know, for the goodness of society or to help out a community, people are surprised. We're living in a world where people are surprised with acts of kindness. That should tell us something about the place that we live in, surroundings around us. Yeah, 
And uh, yeah, I'm proud of you for following your dreams. You've set an example for all of us. No, we shouldn't be living in a society like that. It should be normal for all of us to follow our dreams, whatever it is that we're doing, if, even if it's social cause, even if it's taking that job that you want, or even if you want to like quit and start something on your own, you should be able to do that and you should receive support from people around you. Now, I think that, you know, when you feel positive vibes from a society, I think people can do great things together when, when there's a lot of positivity. If my positive energy can affect someone sitting there, she or he is going to go out and share the same positive energy with somebody else and so on and so forth. There is an inclusive society that gets created where a lot of positivity is generated. Imagine living in a society like that. Imagine living in a community like that that only gives you positive vibes, that just says yes, yes, yes to everything that you want to do for any help that you need. Imagine living in a community like that that is 100% supportive of all of your decisions. Basically, this is what I wanted to share, some of the stories that I've done on Humans of Bangalore. So this gentleman on the left-hand side, his name is Aniket, all right? So Aniket has a very interesting story. Aniket comes from Belgaum, and uh, his parents are really conservative. He is in love with his uh, girlfriend of seven years, and uh, he didn't know how to tell his parents. Typical, you know, Marathi family that is very stringent about these things. And uh, his girlfriend was a Christian, so he didn't know how to break it to them. And he also didn't know how to tell them that he was modeling on the side. And his girlfriend was also modeling. Both of them have done MBAs from premier institutes, but their real passion lies in modeling, being in front of the camera. They enjoy that. But he was afraid to tell his parents about that. But he did it. He did it. You know what, for, for you and me, that seems like, oh, what's that? It's not a big deal. Nobody cares. People are doing that all the time. But it is a very, very much a huge deal. Why do we still have issues with, you know, our kids or our siblings following what they want to do? If you, you want to be in front of the camera, you should be in front of the camera. If you, you feel like you're great at it and you can do it, then you should. None of us have the right to judge them for it or tell them that, no, you can't do that. What will people think? No. But he did it. Aniket did it. Aniket, it took him a little while, but he managed to, you know, step out and get out and say, no, you know what, I'm going to do this. I believe in my dream and I'm, I'm going to do it. I like my job as well, but I want to be a model and I'm going to marry that girl. So they got married and they both model. They are uh, pretty big models now. They do a lot of ads with Kingfisher and uh, a couple of other brands as well. So that's one. And the girl next to him, I don't know her name. I didn't ask her. I met her in Church Street when I was walking down with my camera. I met her, and she's got a very interesting story as well. Her parents are divorced, okay, and they completely stopped talking to her. They didn't care about the custody of the child. By then, she was already in college, final year, just like some of the students who are here. So she didn't have any support, nothing, but she had a dream for herself. She wanted to stay in the city. She had an option of going back to Mysore, to her relative's place, or, you know, heading to Delhi, where her friends were. And she didn't know the language. She didn't know what it was like. She had no money. But she continued with uh, two part-time jobs, one in the night, one over the weekend. So that's how she managed her college life. And somehow, she's still paying dues for it. But that's how she's been managing. Imagine being forgotten by your own parents. Again, it seems like a normal thing, but this is very real. These situations are very real. And we must ask ourselves, why aren't we supporting everybody's dream, big or small? So anyway, she's, she's doing well for herself. And uh, she's managed to land a job in TCS. It's a big deal for her. But yeah, she's doing well for herself. Now, these are people who have made the best use of their, you know, what do I say? Their uh, situation it wasn't, wasn't great. But they saw the best of it. They thought through. They didn't have money, nothing. They were able to get there. Aniket funded his own wedding. Weddings cost a lot, by the way, just saying. So he funded it completely by himself. She has been taking care of all her insurance papers, her dreams for buying a flat, everything. What's stopping us from going out and supporting ourselves? Yeah, so 
being mature. I think that is something that we lack as society, honestly, because we have such, you know, terrible attitudes towards people with uh, psychological disorders. But it's a real thing. It's, it's not something fake. It's not, you know, it's not something that a person is doing to seek attention. Someone with bipolar or someone with uh, an attention deficit disorder, these are all very real things. For physical disabilities, uh, you know, there is a, sim you, you can see it. You can, it's clear, it's a physical disability or you, you'll know, okay, these things exist. I know I'm able to see, I want to go help that person. But what about someone with a psychological disorder? How do you help them? People don't come up and talk because they have a stigma. They have a stigma, they find it difficult to come out and speak because who will take me seriously? Why would anybody listen to me? You know, nobody cares. And I don't want to talk to people about it because everyone thinks I have, you know, I'm trying to seek attention from them. I probably, uh, you know, I'm not happy in life. I need attention. That's not true. There are some stories that I want to share with you. So yeah, the girl on the right. Okay, so she is, again, somebody I met when I was doing a story for Humans of Bangalore. She has clinical depression, okay? And it's a very bad, it's a very bad situation. She tried to kill herself. She received no help from anybody. Her parents were going through a difficult time. She didn't know who to talk to. So she used to, you know, Google numbers and call up all these uh, hotlines and talk to them because nobody would listen to her. But on the outside, she was this happy football loving girl this, yeah, man, I'm, I'm cool, I'm listening. You want to go for that show? Yeah, cool, let's go, let's go. And uh, she'd go party there. She'd go back to college, do all her work, straight A grade student. But she had clinical depression. And she didn't know about this for a few years. She kept calling hotline numbers to find out what was wrong with her self because of the mood swings and inability to concentrate. And that's when she decided she has to go to a doctor and diagnose herself. That's when she found out she had clinical depression. And now she's reaching out to other people and talking to them to help them get out of it. There are lots of, lots of disorders. I wouldn't call them disorders. I would call them, you know, there are, I think there's also challenged, especially challenged in a way, but they're enabling themselves. There are lots of things that people go through. So that is something I think nobody really cares about. And uh, after listening to her story, I went up and met a lot of other people in Nimhans. And uh, they go through the, their own things. They're everyday people. I found out that a lot of people in the workplace that I was at earlier were dealing with being bipolar, schizophrenic, but leading regular lives. Nobody knew about it. It wasn't until I went out and started researching who are all these people. Identify yourselves. It's important to know who they are. It's important to understand what they're going through. Because these things don't have symptoms. You cannot see them and you cannot possibly go through it until you talk to them and see, you know what, this is what I go through. In the morning, I wake up, this girl tells me, I wake up wanting to kill myself. I wake up wondering why am I even worth it? But she's got everything. For you and me, she's like, yeah, she's got everything. You've got a, you've got a fabulous grade list. You'll get into any university. What's bothering you? No, it is a real state of mind. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain, so we need to reach out and help people like her. And yeah, this lady on the left-hand side, her name is Ambika. Ambika was a PR uh, manager for quite some time, for seven, eight years. And she quit her job because she wanted to learn Kannada. She wanted to learn Kannada, so she quit her job, okay? She could have done that when she was working as well, but no, she quit her job. These are her own words. I was going through her story when I was presenting this. I mean, making it in my laptop. So I then I remember the conversation that I had with her. She was like, you know what? I live here in Bangalore. I've been here in Bangalore for so long. I don't know to speak Kannada. And that's my fault. I'm not saying that you should know how to speak Kannada. I'm just talking about her. So before anybody points that out. Uh, yeah, she wanted to go and learn Kannada. So she quit her job. And to fund herself, she's working in the Goethe Institute, the German uh, institute here in CMH Road. She's working there as a receptionist. That money is enough for her to fund her education, her living expenses, everything, and she's quite happy. Now that she's at the German Institute, 
she's learning german as well and she's a german translator her love for languages took her to a place where she could meet other people who love languages and she's doing translating work for people in germany you see what happens when you follow something that you really want to do like you really love languages you quit your pr job which is which pays you a lot and you go to learn languages like kannada and german just that and she's making good money for herself now it wasn't easy but she is doing it her love for languages is paying her off now this is what happens when you start following simple things that you want to do for yourself so the power of identity i think why this is important is because many of us misuse who we are you know we don't understand what we want we don't it's so easy for us to go up on facebook and say hey guys have a great day or send a whatsapp forward saying you know what have a brilliant day and send some picture of a sun or a baby that's not going to help you have a great day okay so let me just put that out there you need to know what you want to do you don't like where you are right now get out of there why are you there if you are going through something get out of there because it's not going to start anywhere else it's going to start with us we are not happy about something we need to start changing it here and once we do that for ourselves if you have enabled yourself you can enable the other person hey look you know what i was not happy with uh, you know the way my dad told me that he is not okay with me going to support the lgbtq thing but i told him i'm going to go do it anyway because for me that's important and he won't understand now but he'll understand later i've gone and done it that helps somebody who's probably homosexual to come out and seek help that there is someone out there who understands my plight so i'm going to go out and get their help because i don't feel right being here i feel so weird and not just that recently like a couple of i think last month there was this really renowned activist okay i'm not going to take their name uh he calls himself a feminist and a women's rights worker well celebrated guy on social media he posts a picture of two women on a scooter with sleeveless t-shirts okay and he says by the way on his cover page it says uh, feminism yay and he says is this how women dress why why are you not preserving indian culture the same goes for men also don't wear pant and shirt you're degrading indian culture you call yourself a feminist and you call yourself a women's right activist and then you do something that is exactly the opposite it affects the people who believe in your work they start saying you know believing whatever you are saying is right because you're an advocate for supporting something as important as women's rights and then you go around saying no women can't wear these clothes it's not in in culture it's kind of opposing the view of supporting feminism and women's rights it's not just him and it's not just because it was women but there are a lot of other people that i personally see on my timeline like recently for the chennai flood crisis okay so we were out we got a request asking if we could collect uh, 300 kgs of relief from kormangla and indranagar so i put out a request on humans of bangalore asking if people could come forward and help i wasn't sure if i'd get any kind of response but the response that i got was massive i collected 550 kgs that day and by the time we went to the air force station to drop it off air force is handling the container dropping it off at tambaram in uh, chennai which is the temporary airport the people who came out to support for that cause were numerous i didn't know any of them and everybody who donated i didn't know a single person and i saw a lot of people you know from bangalore and from chennai who I know I'm safe but weren't able to do anything. They just said, you know what? Uh Chennai deserves it because you know people are dirty. This is what this is how they live. This is not the response that we need. This is not the response that we need from people. We need people to come out and actually act for the cause. And the response that we got from humans of Bangalore to you know uh come forward and donate 550 kgs was massive. now i'm going to recap another fundraising activity that happened on uh, humans of bangalore this so as much as we got the attention for uh, chennai 
flood reliefs. This was another fundraiser that was held on Humans of Bangalore. This is for Imada Halli School in Whitefield. Nobody knows it. So this is a Teach for India guy who contacted me saying that he wanted to raise 75,000 rupees to help rebuild bathrooms. Uh, there were no furnitures in that school for any of the kids. And the toilet was reeking, honestly. I could smell feces and urine sitting in the children's classroom. So nobody was able to help this guy. So we put in a fundraiser and we crossed 75K and we made 1,26,000 through Humans of Bangalore. But the response rate through Humans of Bangalore was quite slow. And you know, that's when I realized that uh, you know, people would probably say a lot. They'd share images about a, ch a child drowning in Syria and uh, you know, children suffering somewhere else in India, probably in Bihar or any part of the world. But they, when you ask them to help you out for a fundraiser in Bangalore, which is right near you, they will not come. Nobody cares. Just, just, they'll just say, oh man, this is such a fantastic thing. Let me know if I can help you. No one's going to help you out. This is the attitude that we need to change. We need to go out there, be active, not just on social media, not just be armchair activists, but also go out there and show that we can do it. So uh, yeah, that's it. This is what we collected. What I'd like to end with is that I may not agree with what you have to say, but I believe in your right to go ahead and do it, Walter Escort. We need to think like that, not just say, you know, you can't do it. It's not possible because society doesn't allow it. We need to be supportive of everybody's uh, acts, everybody's statements, everybody's wishes and dreams. I think that's how it starts. Be positive so other people can go out and uh, feel the positivity and be the change. Thank you.